Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. It is Saturday, March 22nd, 2025. There's been a lot of chatter about why did Yellowstone Volcanic Observatory release information of two eruptions that happened almost a year ago and making it sound like it was an, a new vent that opened up when in fact it wasn't. Hydrothermal eruptions at Yellowstone National Park are a known hazard, but recent developments suggest that new dangers may be emerging. They're not talking about this. They're giving little breadcrumbs and, uh, yeah, some disinformation. So it's new dangers that may be emerging. These eruptions happen when underground water heated by the park's volcanic system rapidly turns into steam, leading to explosive releases of boiling water, steam, mud, and rock. Yellowstone hasn't experienced a volcanic eruption in 70,000 years. There's been smaller eruptions, but they don't talk about it. Maybe about 40 smaller eruptions. Um, but hydrothermal explosions occur more frequently and pose a significant localized risk. Small explosions happen almost yearly, often unnoticed, but larger ones can be devastating with some past events leading to craters over a mile wide. A significant event occurred on July 23rd in Biscuit Basin, where a hydrothermal explosion sent boiling water, mud, and rocks hundreds of feet into the air. This incident damaged a boardwalk and startled visitors, though fortunately, supposedly, none of them were injured. I often wonder about the woman that was covered in the heated mud. But before that, on April 15th at 2.56 p.m., there at um, Nymp Lake, there was another hydrothermal eruption. This one was not observed but was recorded on seismic and uh, microphones. This is at Porcelain Terrace in Norris Geyser Basin. That unexpected eruption created a crater one to two meters across, um, maybe about three to six feet. The closest boardwalk to that location was 50 meters or 160 feet away. Being at the end of uh, the season for the Yellowstone Park to be open. There was no one there. It was recorded, like I said, by seismic and infrasound monitoring. Um, the Norris Geyser Basin Museum picked it up and so did the Ragged Hills. There was a delay of about 1.3 seconds between the two stations, in indicating that the eruption happened at the speed of sound. So many people think, was there a precursor? Was there any indication prior to this? Well, they really don't monitor, monitor uh, different locations. And this is what would be considered a blind hydrothermal area, which means there was no indication above the ground of a hydrothermal uh, event or a spring or anything like that. It was caused by fluids traveling under the ground sideways and not above the ground. Satellite imagery from April 2nd showed active springs within the flow of Nymphar Lake, but by April 21st, the spring appeared to have dried up. That suggested post changes before the eruption. Something under the ground had changed. The water that was flowing into the lake was now moving and building up pressure over here along this um, other location along this um, ridge. Given the location near Porcelain Terrace, as they call it, the explosion's proximity to visitors' areas, like the boardwalk, uh, raises safety concerns. This image here was taken several months later in August by Mo Michael Pollan, who is the scientist in charge. It has now since dried up and is no longer erupting. Another very important and interesting fact is that the Porcelain Basin here is part of the Norris Geyser Basin and is the hottest 
location within Yellowstone National Park. It is near the edge of the Yellowstone caldera. This area too also has the highest acidity um, of the waters. And I drew out a, a blue line. So this was the first eruption here at Porcelain Basin. And I drew out a blue line going down to the eruption of Diamond Pool. Let me bring this out. It's only about an 18 miles difference between the two points. Also interesting too, close to this same location um, is where they found the five dead buffalo in 2004. Uh, I'm showing you that how the gases can come up so quickly and it actually killed the buffalo as they were grazing while still standing on their feet. Here's an image of one of the bison that was found dead on March 11, 2004. Yeah, it just fell right over. Plop. Yeah, they were various ages from adults to calves. The area of Biscuit Basin where the Diamond Pool erupted. Evidently, things are still very unsettled there because the uh, parking lot and the boardwalk is still closed even today even after the eruption on July 23rd, 2024. So, yeah, they're not telling you that um, monitoring needs to be done more closely than what they're doing. Changes from active to inactive and back again may be typical of hydrothermal systems. In Yellowstone, for example, forests have grown during a period of what they call quiet where there was uh, less gases coming up. And I've talked about how the one of the signs is the dead trees that had gro grown up during that quiet period for thousands of years, only to be killed when the hydrothermal systems reactivate. It is possible that many public lands have hidden, hidden geothermal systems. These are known as blind systems because they have no surface expressions. A blind thermal system develops through lateral leakage of thermal waters until it's discovered through research and exploration, including well drilling programs. These hydrothermal systems couldn't be monitored. Hydrothermal systems can change as a result of local or even distant events that alter the water source or flow path, the heated source, thermal characteristics along the subsurface flow paths, and the fractured rock that the waters are flowing through. Some of these changes may be natural or for, for instance, a result of weather patterns, climate change, or earthquake activity. Even pumping water out of the ground changes the flow, may either rapidly, for instance, show changes of the, the flow or the result of an earthquake. Another thing they don't talk about is how hydrothermal features and the areas that they are in may experience rapid dramatic changes. Field teams, as they call it, the scientists, must be aware of the changing conditions at all times. Also, field personnel should carefully reevaluate safety each time they visit a hydrothermal or a thermal feature. Conditions may have changed since the last visit. A formerly safe approach may turn deadly. Toxic gases may be present in hydrothermal areas um, depending on the heat source for the hydrothermal system, such as dangerous concentrations including sulfur dioxide hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide. Yeah, um, something, probably the sulfur dioxide is what killed that buffalo. It came up so quickly. Yeah, no warning whatsoever. So here you are walking along the boardwalks, unaware that things can change in an instant. So in my opinion, that's what's going on at Yellowstone. That's why almost a year later, they're talking about the so-called new hydrothermal vent and it's not it's from um, last year both of them are from last year 
but they still got that one area closed down. So things are happening that they don't tell us. Or do you believe that if there was a danger, they would tell you? What are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.